<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the NSL TV home studio. <laughs> and welcome to the next NSL live talk. And I have guests from Norway. <laughs> It is Agera FS 2022. Um, why don't you introduce yourself quickly? Um, For, for the audience, I know, I think I know who everybody is, but so um, they have seen you once so far um, on NSR Live Talk. I remember that long ago, <laughs> but it's been a while. So go, go ahead, just a quickly um, reintroduction. Yeah, so, so I'm uh, Shethel uh, and I'm the outside center of the team. Yeah. I'm um, uh, Christopher, I'm the uh, tail. Nadia, I'm the point. I'm Julian, I'm in. Whoops, that, that was uh, freezing up now. Okay, you're back, good. Ooh. Um, sometimes the internet is playing things. Okay, well, thank you. Um, and welcome back. I'm glad you took the time and it, it isn't that easy. I mean, it is easy because you're all together in the same room, obviously. And the reason for that is because you are in training. What's what, what's it? Uh, let's see, five hours now after the time change. So you are in the afternoon there. Are you done with your training for today? Where are you and what are you doing and what's going on there? So we are at the, at Voss actually, and uh, we are in the in the middle of the the camp now. So today is our day off. So today we had a lot of time to, to talk together and talk to you. And um, so, so we started on, on Thursday and we had some, uh, some heavy snow. So we couldn't bring the whole team on Thursday. So we did some three-way uh, training. Uh, but then on Friday and Saturday, we had uh, some really, really good uh, training days. And uh, we've been lucky to have uh, Dennis on um, on coaching uh, via streaming. Okay. So that's been great. He's been following us on this camp. So um, we, we think we're making progress. So it's really good. Hi, Dennis. He's probably listening, watching one of you later on. <laughs> um, you're talking about snow, but it is an indoor camp, right? I mean, yeah. yeah, it's an indoor camp, but we're... Uh... We're living on the uh, opposite part of Norway, so uh, when the first camp arrived, we had some trouble trouble with the corona situation. And when we get the go ahead from uh, the, that point of view, we run into a snow blizzard. So <laughs> then the, all the roads closed from uh, east to west of Norway. <laughs> uh, you have snow in, in Norway, that, that's for sure. Um, but uh, Foss is... Um, usually also an outdoor um, place, right? I mean, people are jumping there. Yeah, it's, it's the largest, it's the largest drop zone in Norway doing the most jumps a year, yeah. Well, so it's a popular place to go with, a, it's, it's almost in, a little bit of, in the mountains. So really people like the views and, um, and the mood at the drop zone. It's kind of famous for that, yeah. So we have a we had our running session earlier tomorrow at the at the um, drop zone earlier today. So, hmm. so okay, yeah. well, great. Well, hopefully we will be able to. I mean, the whole world will hopefully see it soon. Um, half of the world saw it already once because you had a European um, indoor championship there, right? Yeah. And that was uh, when. I think it was in 2019, I think. And you didn't compete at that event, did you? No, we're, we're quite new as a team, so we weren't actually uh, formed yet at that point, or was it like two months into our... Uh... Yeah, I think it was two months after we became a team. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, um, again, the Europeans have seen that place already by, you know, with uh, being there for the for the championship, and now the rest of the world will most likely, hopefully, <laughs> also see beautiful Norway 
in the mountains, and that would be next year, right? So yeah, ho hopefully the World Cup is gonna is planned to be in Vos, but you see what's gonna happen to you. Yeah. Well, then let's begin at the beginning. Well, yeah, where's the beginning? Okay. Well, the beginning is um, let's let's get a quick rundown of Corona situation in Norway. You know, it's it's a topic nobody can avoid it these days. It has an impact on our sport. It has an impact of our lives. It has an impact on everything. And, uh, <clears throat> what's the situation in Norway at the moment? So, so here, uh, the government are, are um, closing and opening, like uh, on a weekly basis, almost depending on the on the current um, situation. So we had scheduled. We, we have scheduled a bit fewer camps because we need to travel and traveling is not the best thing to do, you know? So within Norway, you, you talk about traveling within Norway or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. also within Norway. Yeah. So, and um, so, so to get here, everyone that was in like a uh, um, hotspot, like had to take a uh, negative test. And when we got the negative test, we can get uh, allowed to go training and our camp in, in february that we also planned to be here in boss and uh, they closed for for a week or two so we had to try to find somewhere else and um, so so we uh, all the time ad adapting as best as possible and luckily we have made uh, a bit of training during january and february and also during the the fall so, so it's not been too bad, but um, we of course should, we would be really happy to, to be back in Florida like a year ago. And Almost or, exactly or, a year ago, right? It would uh, be like, it is exactly a year ago. Yeah. Like the same day, today, a year ago, you would be in, in Dillon, beautiful Florida. It's perfect weather now, sorry to say that. But... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when was that? The was that when you made your last um, jump from a from a plane um, <laughs> a year ago? We, we actually managed to have the drop zone open in Norway, uh, luckily. So we we did manage to have uh, some some jumps in Norway over the summer. Yeah, you had uh, a national championship, even right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we're since last time we talked to you, we were at the uh, national nationals and, and nationals. Yeah, yeah. the nationals. And right. but we also uh, were at the um, takeout for the um, to be a national team you know, to, mm. to represent Norway, um, which we um, they, yeah. Which we passed. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> congratulations! So, so, so now we're we're officially one of the national teams for Norway, which is really really good. And um, then uh, that we also have a, a new uh, team uh, manager that's uh, also managing the the other nationals team. So would help us with, uh, with the, the training and uh, how to, to plan plan ahead. So it's uh, Marius Sultberg from uh, the, I think last time he competed was with the um, Basharic uh, free fly team back in 2015. Um, it's a, a really, really great guy, guy to have, have with us and uh, to, to help us like going the way to be uh, be a um, international uh, team level. It's nice to have a team manager, no doubt about that. You know, so you don't have to deal with the administration. You know, all you, what you want to do is train. Basically, that's um, you know the ideal situation. So Carl Eric, he, but he Carl Eric is still the the manager of the project, or um, how would you call it? What's his position? So, so we, we, we have been a big part of, of a project called FS20, now called FS2022, 
which Kalle Erik uh, is, is managing and is, is uh, doing a lot of work. And when we became the national team, we sort of is a bit on the side of that project, but we are still uh, coaching the, the re recruit teams that are inside that project. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, of course, we, we talk to Kalle Erik and send some footage from time to time, but it's not so much hands-on anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so the first project we were on, like the FS 2020, uh, was the project to uh, uh, Kaleric and the, um, our local drop zone and um, Skydive Tunsberg. And that our main goal there was to like uh, have four people that was able and had the level and the commitment to be a national team. And now, uh, yeah, obviously we made made it so far, and now like now it's like in the new phase to, to build up the um, the competition community even bigger than than ever. So each of you still has one beginner team that you're working with as a coach, player coach. Um, that is that is still the case. Yes. But, um, do you? Do you all live uh, in Foss or near Foss? Or, I mean, Foss is somewhere more out in the, in the country, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we live uh, four or five hundred kilometers oh. uh, away from each other. Yeah. Uh, so some in Oslo and me in, in Trondheim, which is a bit more north. Yeah, that's and then not... just off her in, in Boston. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's why you meet in in Foss, basically, because there's yeah. a wind tunnel. There's a wind tunnel in Oslo too, isn't it? So we also use that uh, from time to time, hmm. and uh, yeah, it, it just depends a bit about the logistics and and stuff. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And the one is it the same size uh, flying chamber be between Foss and and Oslo? Yeah, it's, it's totally the same, uh, they, they, they feel the same, <laughs> the four, 14 feet, I guess, yeah. Is it 14, 14 foot timber? Yeah. Mm. That's good, that's all you need for four-way, I mean. Yeah, barely, works. <laughs> <laughs> we just had the, um, the, the, the indoor championship here in Paraclete in the 16 foot flying timber. Um, did you follow that a little bit? Yeah, I think we, we watched a lot of videos and, and interviews on, on NSL. And uh, yeah, we are a bit, um, we really want to have a 16 foot chamber, chamber here in Norway as well. <laughs> it, lo it looks a bit more, yeah, <laughs> nice yeah, to more, have. Yes, it is a little bit more, very good space to have, yeah. Well, um, you know, the, the main goal is still outdoor competition, I would guess. And uh, yeah. so, so let's go back now. Um, yes, the last time we heard from you directly was really exactly a year ago in, in Florida um, for, for the training. And um, what, what has happened in the meantime, except, um, except for the, the coronavirus? It was kind of funny. You... You were really literally, I believe, the last team um, visiting here and, you know, training here. And then, you know, everything was over. Um, so did, how did you, <laughs> how did you make it home? <laughs> did you have... it, it, it was, it was funny, you know, when we, when we left, like when we, when the plane took off from Norway, the first uh, virus had come. The, the first situation had come to Norway, okay. and then so, but we we didn't know what was going to happen, right? We were just yes, we leave for Florida. I'm gonna, <laughs> and then we had a great uh, camp, like uh, 15 days. Uh, but for the last two, no, four or five days, the speculation started a little bit. Uh, countries were closing. Uh, the the French teams that were there, they were, were sent back home mm -hmm. and we got a bit stressed, like, okay, our tickets, are they still valid? Do we get home or... Uh, but we were so lucky. Everything just went normally, normal. We, we came home, no stress. No, quarant 
no quarantine or anything. Yeah, then. Yeah. We had to do quarantine for yeah. 14 days. Yeah, quarantine. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But, well, that uh, was also perfect. the. We, we had also just canceled the Shamrock Showdown last year, right? So now it's coming up again next week. Um, are you part <laughs> it's a hybrid event, you know, we, we're going to do it. We have it. We have the US team actually who are traveling to better city it is this time. And uh, I was supposed last year too. And um, and then we'll have a, um, you know, a cloud event again. Um, where the teams from at other locations can participate by sending in the videos, same judging panel and so forth. But I guess it's still a little bit, um, it is still too cold in Norway for outdoor <laughs> competition and you don't have travel. You could go to Emporia Bravo or Spain or Portugal or somewhere, right? Any plans? Uh, well, we probably have to sit in quarantine maybe in Spain and then maybe when we come back to Norway, like uh, to plan any travel now, it's just not really feasible for us. <laughs> yeah, still difficult to get anything going. Huh? But the, the vaccination is uh, coming now, is it? I mean, is it the hope in Norway, just like everywhere else, that vaccination will eventually bring the end of the, um, the crisis? Of the yeah, return? hopefully. But uh... For now, it's no no specific date when when that's gonna be be the case. But, yeah. Uh, well, we're gonna try the shamrock without um, Aguera again anyway uh, this year, so we, we'll be missing you. But you have participated in the meantime <laughs> with the little things we had to offer. You missed the cloud mundial last year, but you did the one in January this year where the participation was very low, but at least you got your judging and some scores. So that was a good thing. And you also did the February one where you are also again very low participation. And I think they're judging it this weekend. So you should have them, you know, by the beginning of next week, you will should have the scores. And then you can also compare and we can see the progression from January to February and so forth. We're a little bit late, a little bit behind, but it will come now soon. Um, yeah, but, but it, it's, it's yeah. great for us because, the, you know, as a team, you need to compete to, to get better. And uh, there is no competitions, local ones at the moment. Uh, so, so having the cloud mondial is was uh, is really good for us, and I think it helped uh, the the camps we had that we had something to focus on. And um, so, we thank you very, really much for for uh, organizing that. Yeah, I wish it was different too for everybody, but that's how it is right now. You will be, what you can do is you can um, use a, Shamrock is an outdoor competition, obviously, but. Um, we will use the same competition draw again in March. So if you, how long is your camp still um, that you're in right? Well, we don't have a Shamrock competition draw yet. So sorry, it'll mm -hmm. only come out um, on the next weekend. But if you have another camp scheduler, if you happen, you know, you can use that draw and then we'll get the judging again and maybe some other teams, who knows, you know, well, um, if people will be able to participate. But I understand it, so I totally, you know, agree. You, you need competition practice, and even if it is only in your own tunnel by yourself, but you, you know, you know, people will be looking at it. You get the judging, so that is important. You know, as a team, it's difficult to judge your own jumps. You know, to be. And uh, that's the main thing is uh, we're mainly competing against ourselves. So uh, the main thing is that we get that practice. You know. Yeah. Well, when you look back at your January performance and you compare it to, let's say, a year ago, whatever, um, how, is the, how is the progression going? It's going, <laughs> going good. It's, it's going good. Um, I think last indoor competition, we averaged like 15.8. So we're like four and a half points up in average. Yeah. That was November 2019, I think. Yeah. So I think we're last in uh, January, we, we averaged 20.3 or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so. Let's see, I have a, I see a 
6.3, yeah, right. So that was for the January meet. And um, you said that a year ago, well, we, did, we, didn't have, uh, we didn't have any, I don't have any indoors. Did you have any other indoor scores actually from? Yeah, we had one, uh, a local meet at Vospin, uh, November challenge in 2019. And but this was just a local meet, so it wasn't like uh, on in-time scoring or anything. Yeah. But then we averaged 15.8, I seem to remember. Yeah. Here you are. No. <laughs> Let's see, let's see how you're doing. And then they can, if you want to, you can give us a, a little comment. I know you would probably be annoyed with your own performance as usual. Yeah. But um, um, even that is interesting. Oops. Well, there's performance designs first of all. But then here we go with round one. That was a very technical start into it. And as you can see, we, we haven't uh, practiced uh, the exits Right. Uh, so much, but but we actually did it for the February draw. Okay. Well, good because in time, you know, they um, they have we had to find a way how to do the judging. Um, you know, and we we are used to do some of the meets breaking with the break of the first formation. But if you go to an official meet, FAI, whatever, you know, you have to launch it. Um, yeah. I mean, at least the time starts running when you're entering the chamber. So good. We we can. Um, how did? Oh, was that was that a big training effort to learn uh, the um, the entry as a formation into the chamber? Yeah, actually, it's it's a bit uh, because now we don't have a coach, uh, a local one that we use, uh, and then it's a bit dif difficult to to know what to do. So so actually, what we did is we just looked through all the randoms and blocks that Arizona Airspeed have launched and we just try to copy it. So, so that's our, uh, our, our go for it now. Uh, and it, it, so far it, it's been okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were analyzing these Arizona videos, like trying to see him, is that his left hand or right hand on the door and leg? And <laughs> well, that's interesting because they have a very sophisticated continuity plan, obviously, if you have followed the interviews and all that, and they're becoming more and more um, creative with everything. So if you're copying, you know, they are, they are, you're putting yourself into the same very flexible continuity situation. That's, a, that's interesting. Um, yeah, but yeah we, we, we noticed that they did changing the styles on different blocks and, uh, over just a couple of months. So it's interesting to see that it's not not necessarily one one solution to uh, to to uh, to a block even even on the on the highest levels. Mm -hmm. Well, it it is interesting for me to see you're obviously studying um, the videos that you get, you know, the information that you get from other events and and from the website and so forth carefully. And I remember that, like especially Carl Eric with the with the Norgies was, you know, very um, intense studying other things to know exactly, you know, what, what everybody's doing. So um, th that's a Norwegian science going on. <laughs> the design yeah, we have some science. spreadsheets that we use, put in some scores and some uh, details. And so <laughs> probably well, that's helpful. Yeah. Well, that, that's, it, it is helpful, you know, numbers don't lie. That's just um, a fact. The numbers are numbers, and um, you know you still have to interpret and find your own ways. But well, that, so what? What do you find out about yourself? Is it um, again? You know, my question earlier: um, Is it going as you were planning for, hoping for? Um, what's going on? It looks very nice and very clean. So you know, I can see Dennis signature a little bit behind it there uh, obviously coaching signature behind it and then you worked with Solly actually last year right on the outdoor yeah so um, we, we're still working a little also a little bit of both right now because uh, obviously it's a little bit easier to to have Dennis with the um, with the time difference uh, with Solly but like when we 
getting back to uh, to Florida again uh, when uh, everything opened up. So, uh, we were uh, like uh, still uh, having Sully um, there and training with us. And now as we uh, got to be got to be one of the nationals teams, we we're have we're going to be able to tra train even more. When you watch the, when you see the, the judging there, um, you know, and the, the, the penalty situations, if you, if you look at it, if, when you look at the same, um, the same um, videos by yourself in the debriefing of the team and so forth, would you detect this by yourself? Would you, uh, you know, would it be a different outcome um, compared to when you get the professional judges doing their job there? It's of course nice to have the professional view on it as well. Um, actually, in training, we don't spend too much time at the moment uh, with um, with busts. Uh, it's 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 kind of what we think that uh, uh, if we do do the blocks well and the the random well, then we we will lower the the amount of busts as well. But when we do the, the competition draw, we look through it and, and see what how we can have less busts, of course. Yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> you, you see like where the judges uh, like give us penalty and so so on. So it's a learning ex experience to see, for, for example, I think it was on round uh, five where you have the transition from E to 15 and you like see that uh, it doesn't separate separate enough, and uh, you see also uh, here I think on the uh, not this one but on block twelve we also have um, some issues with the separation, and uh, you get that much clearer with with the uh, judging competition than just with training. How much? Um... How much effort did you have to put into um, learning the entries, all the different entries? Did you have to dedicate like a certain um, training camp only to, to learn those? And you go in there and just do the, the entry and then you go back out and then you, how do you train it? We haven't really <laughs> learned all the entries actually. We just saw the draw for the January and February competitions. And then we picked out a few of them. We were like, okay, we'll focus on these, like the G and the 19. We spent a little bit of time trying to fix and work out, yeah. Yeah, so, so I think it's because there is no uh, big competition indoor that is scheduled for us. So we don't really spend much time on the entering, um, learning the entering really well. Uh, I guess if, if there were, had been a national uh, in April or something, we would dedicate uh, a, a day or two for learning the entering. Yeah. So that will come on next year, definitely, because then you're on home turf and you have to, you don't want to embarrass yourself. You want to look sharp and, and professional when you're, so that you dedicate some time for that. But still, that's a year away. Yeah. So theoretically, I mean, hopefully, realistically we still have a world championship of outdoor competition this year in Tanai in Russia are you prepared for that I mean the plans you're just going forward um, assuming at this point in time that it will happen as it is at this point in time it's a fact it's happening right so we are it is scheduled and so far it is not cancelled um, are you excited about going to the first world meet yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, we want to do some jumps before we go there, but uh, <laughs> we're definitely excited. And for us, it will be our first World Championships. So uh, probably a big learning curve, but also a good experience. But before that time, we hope to do, uh, well, at least a few hundred jumps. Uh. Yeah. Hopefully, everybody will get a few hundred jumps. In this, so the, but... Um, we don't we don't know that yet, uh, obviously, because we there's the the pandemic is still going around there at this point in time, especially in Europe. 
when would you, I mean, it's also very difficult to schedule anything right now, especially Autocom, but do you have, do you have a schedule for the year actually? And then you go from, from date to date and do it or cancel it, do it or cancel it. How, how do you deal with that? It's difficult. Yeah, yeah, we have to have uh, some clear dates to, to have uh, in our plan. Uh, because everybody here has, uh, has jobs on the side and so, so we cannot just suddenly take uh, a week off. So, so we have to, to plan ahead and the, the schedule all the way to August is now set. And then we just have to yeah, go for it or, or cancel it if, it if we can't do it. Yeah. Well, you're not, yeah, I mean, everybody's in the same boat, you know, that's kind of almost, I mean, not yes or no, you know, almost everybody is in the same boat. Some have it easier, some difficult. It, it's, you know, it's different basically in each country, you know, for what, how it is. So, well, we have to deal with it no matter, no matter what, nothing we can do. So if you, we just saw the January, um, the January performance. So you did the February um, the draw already. Um, did you have the feeling after the, the February rounds that you made the next step forward? Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I, we're not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> because we did the entering also, we, we spent some oh, yeah, time yeah, on yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so, so. Also, we didn't have a chance to uh, um, fly anymore in the tunnel from the January jumps until February. So we have basically, we've had one camp every month of like four or five days where we fly pretty intensely these days. And then we have a few weeks off until the next camp. Uh, uh, we feel like uh, this camp now as uh, with Dennis from Hayabusa, uh, we, we I learned and picked up quite a lot of like little things on on uh, on on the blocks and and uh, how to think when flying and um, a little bit of his philosophy um, and I think like for the next competition we will we we're hoping to train with a high, higher average. Yeah, you cannot. It's really comparing apples with bananas at the moment anyway because the entry, you know, will be the working time is totally different. So that, that you cannot really compare it. So it would be interesting to see it anyway, you know, how your entries look like and how it affects the scoring. But yeah, so good, good. We will see more um, then, um, you know, soon. And we should have a March draw so you get a compare from, you know, from the same judging panel. And uh, yeah, so let's do that. Let's take the shamrock as soon as you have it. And as soon as you have your next camp, use it and then, um, there, there's enough time. So when is your next camp scheduled officially? Uh, I don't have the date, in, 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 but in the middle of April. April. Well, then, you know, we, we, uh, let's just skip the March anyway, because we have the Shamrock and do an indoor draw again yeah. for, the, for the month of April. That makes actually more sense than trying to squeeze it in, you know, and uh, focus on the Shamrock. And hopefully next year you will be <laughs> a part of Shamrock life then in Florida. Are you planning on doing a winter training again, um, if possible, in next season? 22. Oh, we have a world meet next year anyway. So there will be Shamrock. The world meet is in Arizona next year, right? Yeah. yeah. First, fast in, 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 uh, in April, oh, I think it is. And then the, world, the outdoor world meet um, half a year later. Wow, what a year for you. Yeah. <laughs> you, you picked the time frame nicely. <laughs> it's within two years. Yeah, we have all the championships lined up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess the, the name um, Agira FS 2022 will soon change into Agira 24 anyway, I guess. <laughs> The addiction, it's difficult to stop it, especially when you're learning, you know, with a coach like Dennis and you're learning from the best Dennis and, and Solly. So the progress is guaranteed, basically. All right, well, when um, you're not training today anymore, but tomorrow you're back in the chamber. How much is it, an hour a day or more than that? No, it's, it, uh, tomorrow is uh, our last day at those 
questions before we go going back. And how much flying time do you have scheduled for tomorrow? It's, uh, it's only 45 minutes, but uh, uh, in the end, it's we feel that if we get more out of less when uh, flying uh, 45 minutes, you get the time to debrief it and uh, go through it as much as possible. How do you split it up the 45 minutes? Three 15 minute blocks or how? Yeah. 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 And um, so if you have 45, you, that was a whole week of indoor training. I mean, thirst, beginning on Thursday, no, like four days or no, five days. Yeah, it, sh it should be five days, mm. but I oh. think it's four days now, yeah. Yeah, and that, that'll be, uh, so it's a total of like four hours then uh, roughly that you had flying time? Yeah, yeah great. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that'll show. Now I can't wait for the next one. Okay, well, go back and uh, do your workout for the day. What, what are you doing with today? Uh, this is workout time together, die stretching and working out together and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some running. We, we had a run in the morning and then we will have something uh, later this evening. As a team. Yeah. Ah, good. So and we like... also just went uh, swimming in the local ri river down in Boston. <laughs> so that's nice. Pleasure on cold water. <laughs> A coffee before, um, I guess, because you know, in Norway, Scandinavia, coffee is a part of daily operation on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> it's good before a workout too. Well, have fun, enjoy it. Good, you know, have a good one tomorrow for the rest. And I'll let you go to your workout now and the rest. Thank you for taking the time to um, come yeah. back a year later. <laughs> yeah. And um, hopefully we even see each other again in August this year. Yes. Yeah. Oh, let's try to make it happen. <laughs> but we, we will hear from each other in the meantime and uh, um, enjoy the rest of the camp. And then good luck with everything that is going on in Norway and in our skydiving world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs>